Coming up on the show, legendary singer-songwriter and USM alum Jimmy Buffett has passed away. SMTV is covering how the university has reacted and how they plan to honor his memory. USM administration seeks to improve on-campus experiences as new administration takes office. Plus, school is back in session and students are already hard at work. SMTV News for Wednesday, September 6, 2023 starts right now. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. Hello, USM, and thank you for tuning in. I am Jeterica Wilson, and this is SMTV News. Legendary Southern Miss alum and iconic singer Jimmy Buffett recently passed away Friday in his home at age 76. With a healthy career spanning over 40 years, Buffett established himself as a successful singer, songwriter, and creator of the Margaritaville Restaurant and Resort. His professional portfolio includes more than 30 albums, a Grammy nomination, and three books highlighted on the New York Times bestseller list. His laid-back approach to music and life led to a cult following of supporters known as Parrotheads, who now mourn his death with the rest of the world. Buffett graduated in 1969 with a degree in history and was a member of the Kappa Sigma fraternity. He was a longtime supporter of philanthropists and university was inducted in the Alumni Hall of Fame in 2018. Buffett was a common topic at the first game of the 2023-24 football season Saturday. People sang Margaritaville, told stories of Buffett, remember his long-lasting USM legacy, and talked positively of the icon. Here's what some people had to say about the recent news of his passing. Um, energetic music. Yeah. I mean, even when I was at work, I leave work, I just on the way home. And it was one of those calming songs that would always uh, make everything a lot better. Gave back. He really, he really wanted to be here. Uh, he could have gone anywhere else. He could have been a member of any other group. He could have done whatever. He, he came to Southern Miss. He really lived that Southern Miss lifestyle. Um, surely he gave his time and more so back in the day before he got super big and famous. But um, you know, we're, we're, we were blessed to have him. We're blessed to have him as a Southern Miss alumnus, and uh, we're really gonna miss him here. Golden Eagle Nation mourns the passing of Jimmy Buffett. It's a bit ironic, it's on a game day, and we're going to remember him at the game. Uh, but what an icon, a global icon, but certainly a favorite son of Southern Miss who got his start here, who graduated in journalism in 1969, who did two concerts here in the 80s. Uh, just, just a prince of a man. Um, we will remember him fondly today, and I don't think he would want us to mourn as much as celebrate his life and way of living. We'll do that at Southern Miss. SM2 sat down with University President Dr. Joe Paul to discuss his goals for the new school year. Every school year brings new challenges, and USM is no exception. Recently, the school has struggled with declining enrollment, concerns about diversity, the cost of attendance, and other issues. Hence why Joe Paul's administration is working hard to meet these challenges. As part of it, Paul has assembled a top team of administrators, including some new faces. Uh, integrating those folks together, pulling together in that vision around growth for Southern Miss, we're still really focused on enhancing the quality of student life for all of our students as we raise those private dollars to give us a margin for excellence. This team includes Provost Dr. Lance Nail, Vice President of Research Dr. Kelly Lucas, and Dr. Christy Motter as Vice President of Student Affairs and Enrollment Management. While the times feel bleak, things are actually looking up at Southern Miss. Enrollment has increased, diversity remains one of the school's top priorities, and Paul is fundraising to bring in 30 million private dollars for new leadership scholarships. Forbes even recently named USM the state's sixth best employer. Through it all, Joe Paul remains one of the most active university presidents. When asked what makes USM such a great employer, 
Paul responded. And I think one of the things that makes Southern Miss such a great place to work is how great our students are. They come to us, they're earnest, uh, they're engaged, they want to better themselves, and that makes for a great place to work. Because you can, go, you, you can go home at night knowing you're making an impact that's going to last a lifetime. Sims administration seems perfectly positioned to make the most of this school year. New students should follow their example by taking advantage of campus resources and making the most of every single day. Simeon Gates, SN2 News. Now let's take a look at what the Screaming Eagles were up to last Friday at The Rock and the school spirit they sent flying our way. Tonight, the Screaming Eagles will kick off right here at The Rock at 9 o'clock p.m. Screaming Eagles is held every year on the night before the first football game of the season. It is a time that USM students get to run across the field together, scream, yell, and just get pumped up for the game the next day. It is held at the M.M. Roberts Stadium, better known as the Rock Stadium on campus. With it being time now for Screaming Eagles, do you think the Golden Eagles are ready? Let's go find out. Running as fast as a Golden Eagle could, USM students ran across the field while screaming with excitement. Some of them even bumped into each other, but they never stopped running and keeping the energy alive. A shoe was found on the ground. Did someone lose a shoe? It's a Nike yeah. shoe, it's a nice shoe. The Pride of Mississippi Marching Band rehearsed day and night to give the students the best performance for this event that they could. Woo. Practice is not a joke. Uh, we practice like from 8 o'clock in the morning to 10 at night every day. So uh, it, it, it's a great experience. They may have practiced for long hours, but it paid off. The crowd danced and sang to the music that the band played for them. It was truly evident that the students in the stands enjoyed their time. Dr. Joe Paul even came to encourage the students. More encouragement came from Seymour as he hyped up the crowd for Screaming Eagles. Even though Seymour is our school's mascot and is known to always be energized, he was exhausted after Screaming Eagles. The event turned out to be successful. Reporting for SM2, I am Jeterica Wilson. Rides, food, a petting zoo, and more are what you can expect at the Pine Belt Fair. The fair is hosted and located at the Forest County Multipurpose Center and is open to all ages. Tickets are $10 for adults and $5 for children, military personnel, and senior citizens. Whoa, all right, good try, good try. A lot, really, this whole party. I, I, uh, I like the Superman run, because it takes you up and up. I will run through Sunday, September 10th, for the full schedule of events and performances, right, no, such right. as show and so much more visit their Facebook page at Pine Belt Fair. Now let's take a closer look at the Mississippi governor's race. The latest polls from Mississippi Today and Centel College show incumbent Republican Governor Tay Reeves is leading Democratic nominee Brandon Presley by 11 points ahead of the November general election. According to the poll which survived which survey rather 650 likely Mississippi voters between August 20th and the 28th found 52% of the respondents will vote for Reeves, while 41% will support Presley. 6% of respondents were undecided, and 1% said they were not going to vote. Presley and Reeves will compete in the general election on November 7th against Gwendolyn Gray, an independent candidate who did not meet a percentage in the August polls. To register to vote in the November elections, visit the Secretary of State website to find a voter's registration drive near you or go to vote.gov. The Return of Spirit Park Live at Southern Station season kicked off this past Saturday with a star-stud performance by country music vocal group Chapel Heart. 
from Poplarville, Mississippi, the group earned a golden buzzer performance on America's Got Talent and finished fifth overall on the 17th season of the show. Chapel Heart is no stranger to campus and remains one of Southern Miss's favorite all-female musical groups of all time. Catch the remaining Southern Miss home games featuring live music and other acts at Spirit Park Live. Rising gas prices continue to be a hot topic among Mississippi residents. The average price for a gallon of regular unleaded gas in South Mississippi stands at $3.10, reflecting a steady increase over the past few weeks. According to Gas Buddy survey of gas stations in Mississippi, the average gasoline prices in Mississippi have risen 60 cents per gallon in the last week, averaging $3.26 per gallon today. Experts attribute this rise to a combination of factors including increased demand as students head back to school and ongoing supply chain challenges. While South Mississippi's prices remain below the national average, it's essential to keep an eye on your fuel budget as you hit the road. The Southern Miss Alumni Association hosted their annual Friday night at Spirit Park. Stay tuned for a closer look at the show. Football season in with a blast. They hosted Friday night at Spirit Park September 1st. They invited students, administration staff, alumni, fans, and families in celebration for the first home football game. This celebration included food truck vendors ranging from good old hamburgers to a cool snowball for the Mississippi Heat. Southern Miss Cheer and Dance put on a show for the guests along with the help of DJ Cujo. The night was filled with dancing and fun in anticipation for a great game. In entertainment news, over the weekend, Oscar-winning actor Denzel Washington topped the box office this Labor Day weekend with The Equalizer 3, making $34.5 million from Friday to Sunday per Comscore. In second place at the box office, Barbie is now in its seventh week of release. This blockbuster brought in a projected $13.8 million over the holiday weekend bringing its cumulative total to 612.7 domestically. Blue Beetle is still buzzing in its third week of release, bringing in a projected $9.4 million through Monday for a domestic total of $58.8 million and $101.9 million globally through Sunday. For the latest in entertainment news and more, visit our website, sm2media.com. Coming up after that break, we'll give you the latest news on what's happening around the Pine Belt and around the nation with our weekly flash briefing. Until then, stay tuned, and here's a quick look at your current traffic cam on Hardy Street, provided by MDOT. For news, weather, sports, and more, follow Southern Miss Student Media on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Welcome to the University of Southern Mississippi Writing Center. We are located in Cook Library, past the main doors and to the right. The Writing Center is open to all students at USM, including undergraduate students, graduate students, professional students, and dual enrolled students. The Writing Center can help with all stages of the writing process, including brainstorming, drafting, revising, and polishing. We work with many forms of traditional writing, including essays, reports, labs, personal statements, theses, dissertation, and articles. We also work with multimedia communication, including slide presentations, websites, videos, social media, and more. And we work with professional documents such as resumes, cover letters, CVs, and personal statements. At the Writing Center, we aim to help you develop skills and build on your strengths as a writer and communicator. To set up an appointment, go to usm.mywconline.com. Enter your student ID and password in the provided box and search the scheduler. Click on the day and time you would like to make an appointment. Please be sure to verify if you would prefer an in-person appointment or an online appointment. We also take appointments by phone or in person. 
For appointments by phone or for any questions, please call the front desk at 601-266-4821. We hope to see you soon. The world is changing and we are changing with it as our students create, inspire, and inform. Beginning this fall, the School of Media and Communication will take its Public Relations Master's degree fully online. That means students anywhere in Mississippi or around the world can get their advanced PR degree from the University of Southern Mississippi. Check us out as our students find new ways to create, inspire, and inform. happening in local news. The Hattiesburg Pocket Museum STEM for this month just may blow you away. If you visit the colorful alleyway this September, you can learn about Hattiesburg's past of being a nuclear bomb testing site. In the 1960s, nuclear bomb testing was carried out deep underneath Hattiesburg, around 2,700 feet down. The city sat above a massive salt dome which allowed the government to test these secret weapons without detection. You can learn more about these operations and more by visiting the Pocket Museum up until the end of this month, thanks to their temporary partnership with the Atomic Museum in Las Vegas. In state news, the governing board of Mississippi's public universities has established a task force to study and access accessibility accommodations in colleges across the state. This is possibly the first time action like this has been taking place since the Americans with Disabilities Act was enacted 33 years ago. This initiative comes at a crucial time with an increasing number of college students disclosing disabilities, particularly mental disorders such as depression and post-traumatic stress disorder, which are protected by the ADA. The USM Department of Education is expected to introduce new rules this month to prevent discrimination against students with disabilities in schools that receive federal funding. The 19-person task force, including representatives from campus and the Department of Finance and Administration, aims to produce a report with recommendations to drastically improve accessibility services by June of 2024. Now, in national news, Brazilian president proposed the BRICS nations create a common currency to reduce the dependence their economy has on the U.S. dollar. BRICS, which is a group of nations composed of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, was created in 2001 as a way to band economies with rising global influence together. The BRICS countries have a combined population of over 3 billion people and a combined GDP of over $20 trillion. They are almost major producers of commodities such as oil, gas, and metals. The president of Brazil believes it's not right that countries do not use the U.S. dollar and are forced to trade using it and face unneeded economic stress. Under other members of BRICS disagree with the Brazilian president, as it is unlikely this new currency will come to fruition. The effects of the rising popularity of the dollar have American citizens worried. This could reduce the influence of the U.S. on the global stage and weaken the standing of the U.S. dollar as a global reserve currency. Hey, Larissa, how's that weather looking for the Pine Belt? I'm Larissa Lee and it's time to dive into your SMTV weather forecast for this week. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. First, let's talk about your seven day forecast. It's looking like a mix of sunshine and showers for the upcoming week. Tomorrow, expect partly cloudy skies with a high of 99 degrees Fahrenheit. On Friday, we'll see an increase in clouds, but the high will remain a pleasant at 97 degrees Fahrenheit. 
But I know many of you have plans for the weekend here in Hattiesburg, so here's a scoop on Saturday. Get ready for a beautiful day. The sun will be out in full force and we're expecting a high of 96 degrees Fahrenheit. Perfect weather for that outdoor barbecue or family picnic you've been planning. Now, regarding rain chances for the rest of the week, it looks like a pattern of scattered showers starting from Sunday onwards. So, if you're making outdoor plans early next week, keep that umbrella handy. Here's your game day forecast for Saturday as the Golden Eagles take on Florida State in Tallahassee. It will be partly cloudy early in the morning hours with scattered thunderstorms developing in the afternoon. The high is 90 degrees Fahrenheit for the day with a chance of rain. In the evening hours, you should expect a few thunderstorms with mainly clear skies after midnight. And let's not forget to talk about that seven-day hurricane outlook provided by the National Hurricane Center. It's that time of year when we will keep a closer eye on the tropics. The experts are expecting an above-average hurricane season, so now's the time to review your hurricane preparedness plans. We'll keep you updated as the season progresses. Before we wrap up, let's add a touch of humor to your day. On this day in history, way back when, there was a vent there was an event that left everyone in stitches. Picture this. It was a hot summer day, just like today. People were heading off to the beach, eager to cool off. But oops, someone's ice cream truck broke down right in the middle of the road. The traffic jam turned into an ice cream party. Remember, life's little mishaps can sometimes lead to the sweetest memories. I'm Larissa Lee, and that's your weather forecast, Hattiesburg. Stay tuned for more weather updates right here on SMTV, powered by SM2. Remember, whatever the weather, we've got you covered. several stories left in our show. Stay tuned for weather, news, and sports affecting Hattiesburg this week. The world is changing, and we are changing with it as our students create, inspire, and inform. Beginning this fall, the School of Media and Communication will launch its strategic communication program that incorporates public relations, advertising, media sales, and organizational communication. Check us out as our students find new ways to create, inspire, and inform. If you're watching this with your friends, you'll probably make a joke. Because you know what you feel on the inside isn't what you want people to know. If you have to pretend to be happy, find someone you trust and tell them. If you get mad at things and you don't know why, or have thoughts about hurting yourself, find someone you trust and tell them. You are never alone when you share. Seriously, people care about you. It's okay to not understand what you're feeling. And it's easy to think that you're all alone. But you don't have to be. You're never alone when you share. Don't be ashamed to tell someone you trust what you're feeling. You're not alone. You are not alone. Find someone you trust and tell them. Tell a parent. Tell a teacher. Tell a brother or sister. Or just tell a friend. You haven't done anything wrong. Talk to someone. Talk to someone. It's how things get better. At a time when misinformation is all too common on social media, we take great pride in bringing you the news that matters, that impacts your family, news you can trust. Local broadcast journalists bring you the facts, covering the stories breaking in our community and across the globe. Text TV to 52886 and let Congress know you depend on local journalism. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. The drug landscape has changed. Illegal fentanyl has made its way into the drug supply and it's a danger you might not see coming. A synthetic opioid up to 50 times stronger than heroin, up to 100 times stronger than morphine, 
It only takes the tiniest amount to cause a fatal overdose. A fraction of a raindrop, or three grains of salt. Your drugs don't come with an ingredients list. Although fentanyl is being mixed into almost every kind of drug, you wouldn't be able to see it, or smell it, or taste it. Fentanyl is one of the most common drugs involved in overdose deaths. Know the dangers. Learn the facts about fentanyl and ways to protect yourself at cdc.gov slash stop overdose. back Golden Eagles. I'm Omari Anderson, your Four Streets reporter, and it is the start of the fall semester, and I will have all your sports news every Wednesday right here on SM2. First up, Eagle football is back. The Eagles took on HBCU Alcorn University Saturday and won 40-14 to in an exciting home season opener. The Eagles held Alcorn to only two touchdowns and were up 27-7 to at the half. New quarterback Billy Wiles had a career night finishing with 257 passing yards, a 76% completion rate, and three touchdowns. The Sun Belt honors Andrew Stein as our Special Teams Player of the Week as he went 4-4 four four in field goal attempts, including a 52-yard field goal in a 40-14 victory versus Alcorn State on Saturday. You can be sure to catch the Eagles in action this Saturday as they take on Florida State in Tallahassee, Florida at 7.30 p.m. Heading over into the volleyball side of things, the Lady Eagles are 1-5 after a heavy weekend of volleyball in the SFA tournament where the Lady Eagles clinched their first win of the season versus Nichols where the ladies won three sets to none. The Lady Eagles went on to lose to Cal Poly and Stephen F. Austin over the weekend. Congratulations are still in order for Lady Eagles, Mia Wesley and Asu Dalagori as they were named to the SFA All-Tournament team for their perfect performances over the weekend in Texas. Kicking things over to the women's soccer, the Lady Eagles are now 2-4 after they took an 0-4 loss to Georgia Bulldogs this past Sunday. You can be sure to catch the Lady Eagles in action at home on Thursday, September 7th, where they will host Alabama at 4 p.m. The Southern Miss Golden Eagles now have 10 pro Eagles as they have locked themselves in on an NFL team's roster. The list of players are Cornell Armstrong, Natron Brooks, Tykeem Doss, Eric Scott Jr., Tavarius Moore, Tim Jones, Nick Mullins, Rakeem Nunes Roches, Jason Brownlee, and Quez Watkins. Congratulations to these former Eagles. I am Omari Anderson, and this has been your 4th Street Sports Recap, powered by SM2. If you want more sports, sm2media.com. Welcome back to a new episode of Golden Eagle Spotlight. I am your host, Amaya Norman, and on today's episode, we have two wonderful guests who are the members of the Hattiesburg JC, Hillary Long and Danielle Terrell. How are y'all ladies doing today? Oh, we're fine. It's good. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this. Tell us what this organization is about. All right. Look at me. <laughs> in a nutshell, uh, the JCs are a um, young person civic organization. We're geared towards 18 to 40. Um, we're, our, our primary goal is to um, empower and to inspire positive change. So there's a whole lot of opportunities to do that from events to, to training and, and fun things, travel. Um, but that's just a little snippet. Mm -hmm. Um, so you mentioned, you're fine, you're fine. So you mentioned training uh, with this organization. Tell us about the trainings that y'all do have um, that benefits people in the community. That's good, Danielle. One. So <laughs> locally we have, um, we have monthly meetings, um, two meetings every month. And on one of our meetings is like budgeting. 
the business stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And then our second meeting is pretty much our development meetings. Our, um, we've had training as far as insurance, importance of insurance, where to get insurance, what type of insurance you need. Um, we've had um, mental health um, speakers come through. We've had breast cancer awareness conversations. We've had um, just community service, why it's important. We also had a um, candidate forum. We have, we're planning a blood drive that's tomorrow. You guys are interested to a Hutchinson <laughs> Avenue um, from 11 to three, go give some blood. But we um, had a meeting that shared why it's important to give blood, mm -hmm. who can and can't, yes. policy changes and things like that. Yes, that's, that's, that's great. So we want to grow you. Yes. <laughs> so I noticed that y'all done amazing things in the Hattiesburg, in the Hattiesburg community and y'all also helped the youth to become better leaders. Can you tell us more about that? Um, how does um, the youth benefit um, off of this uh, organization? Well, because, because the organization starts at the 18 year range, um, people coming in have an opportunity to see some, um, some groundwork, behind the scenes things uh, for event development, and then also some interpersonal professional development. Um, I like that word. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> some of the more fun things that I got to do earlier in the organization were, were travel and, and, and exposure to other parts of the country that mm -hmm. I had not been um, in different uh, communities that I had never you know met anybody from. And so it was really neat to, to have a, a, a more of a, I guess, a national or global perspective. Mm -hmm. um, they even get to meet um, a lot of the things that we do. We do have to communicate, network with city officials, mm -hmm. um, other local businesses. Um, also, like, so I'm not 18, mm -hmm. and um, so for an 18 year old coming in, you get to network with people who have probably gone through some of the things that you've gone through, just basic and basic community things. But two, we're already, for some of us, in a profession or in a job um, skill. So we're able to provide some leadership and some direction in that regard. Um, some of our national trainings include um, dress code and how to dress in certain situations, um, as well as budgeting and finances. And again, it's just a networking opportunity that some 18 year olds just don't have the resources yes. and network. Something else that's neat is that we do use parliamentary procedure for mm -hmm. our business meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and so as you grow and become more active in any way, in politics and in any kind of uh, organization that has a board, that's gonna be something that you'll need to, to know how it, how it works. I think that's probably one of the, the biggest things that I've got taken away from that too, is a skill you use many, many times. That is great. So um, the JC Hattiesburg, can y'all tell us where y'all located? How can they reach you? Um, what are the process of becoming a member and um, the events that y'all have coming up? Oh, we got a bunch of them. <laughs> the hut on Hutchinson is at 208 Hutchinson Avenue. It's over there um, actually behind Keg and Barrel. Um, that building belongs to us and it's uh, we do use it for event space, for rental space. It's very affordable for rental space if you're, anybody's ever looking for something like that. But more importantly, it gives us a home, yes. um, a place to congregate. Um, upcoming, uh, we have a tailgate here at USM on September 16th. So anybody that's interested in hearing a little bit more about what we do, come by and see us, and we will tell you a little bit more about it. But other than that, it's... it's blood drive tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So September 1st, blood drive. <laughs> this is our 29th year of donating or of hosting love. this event, Labor of Love. And we always have it the Friday before Labor Day. Of course, y'all know Labor Day is Monday, so take the day off if they let you. <laughs> but um, from 11 to 3, we'll be at the hood. Um, Simri will be there giving um, some health screenings. Some health screenings mm -hmm. And then, of course, the opportunity to provide, uh, give blood. That's tomorrow, September 16th, the tailgate um, here at USM on campus. Um, October the 3rd, we are hosting with... Um, uh, Hattiesburg High School neighborhood, the National Night Out Against Crime. So we'll be at the hood from five to eight. And then on October the 14th, we have the food truck festival that will be downtown. It's our partnership and that's a lot of what we do. We partner with others in the community to host different events and informationals. But this is a partnership between um, the Hattiesburg JCs and Nick Fairley and other organizations in Hattiesburg, but that's our food truck festival. It brings in about 1,800 people mm -hmm. into Hattiesburg downtown. I'm from all over the state. Mm -hmm. All over the state and some parts of Louisiana and Alabama. And then November the 30th, oh, the wow. Christmas parade. <laughs> <laughs> which is our biggest event each year. Um, this is our 73rd year annually to do it. In 2016, mm -hmm. I think we started um, partnering with the city to have it end at the city tree lighting downtown mm -hmm. in Town Square Park. 
and that event has grown tremendously. So that'll be on Thursday, November the 30th at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, tree lighting, I think 7:15, and um, it that it it's amazing. We we really enjoy seeing all the all the not just the participation, but the uh, support that we get from people coming in and showing where the, the streets are lined. Mm -hmm. They can email us at hattiesburgjcs at gmail.com. They can find us on Facebook, JCI, Hattiesburgjcs. Um, JCIUSA.org is mm -hmm. our uh, parent organization that tells you a little bit more about membership. Um, we, I think it's important to mention that we are an international organization. So mm -hmm. the JCs are actually represented in 120 countries, uh, 5,000, I think, chapters. So. Well, thank you so much for the information and thank y'all for coming to join us here today. My and always remember, Southern Miss to the, to the top. top. <laughs> oh, I was thinking, thanking them. Welcome to the SMTV Community Calendar. I am Ariana Sanders here with the community events of the campus. Do you think you have talent? If so, join the Southern Miss Activities Council for their USM Has Talent auditions from September 7th and 8th. Sign up today through Sign Up Genius located on the organization's Instagram page. Take a trip under the sea with the Southern Miss Activity Council on September 8, 2023 to view the film The Little Mermaid at 7 p.m. in Joe Paul Theater. The organization would love to see you there. Remember to bring your student ID for entry. Are you looking to become more involved on campus? The Student Organization Involvement Fair would be on Wednesday, September 13 in the Union Plaza from 12.30 p.m. to 2 o'clock p.m hosted by the Office of Southern Miss Leadership and Involvement. The university is filled with different cultures and students awaiting exposure to people with different ethnicities. The IME office will be having its Hispanic Heritage Month event, Abalar, on September 21st in the Payne Center from 6 to 8 p.m. Thank you for watching the community calendar. I am Ariana Sanders reporting on the events around campus. Be sure to listen to Southern Miss today, Monday through Thursday at noon on WUSM 88.5, The Student Prince, and on our website at sm2media.com for more SM2 community calendar events. Hattiesburg. It's a bright start to your day with clear skies and a gentle breeze. Temperatures will climb to a comfortable 91 degrees Fahrenheit this afternoon. No rain in sight, so it's the perfect day to get outdoors and soak up that sunshine. Grab your shades and enjoy the beautiful weather. Oh, we won Saturday. We, we played did. all corn. We, we came, we fought, we won. We <laughs> always by 40. <laughs> See you later, all corn. I really don't even know if it was a fight. I had said prior to me because my sister goes to Alcorn, she lives there or whatever. I had said it was going to win. So. And all y'all came down here to go home with the ill. But mm -hmm. at least y'all look good. The man? <laughs> mm, the man had. Yeah. They did. Yeah. But, but did y'all see? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to just give my condolences to Jimmy Bush. That's what I, mm -hmm. well, no, that's what I was going to say because like at the game, they honored him. That's so As sweet. they should. Yeah. Rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Long live Jimmy Buffett, guys. Right. <laughs> but we thank you all so much for tuning in to SMTV. Make sure to visit our social media pages and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Southern Miss Student Media. You can find all these stories and more on our website, sm2media.com. And as always, Southern Miss.
to the top. TV news episode? Find us and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Southern Miss Student Media. Welcome to the University of Southern Mississippi Writing Center. We are located in Cook Library, past the main doors and to the right. The Writing Center is open to all students at USM, including undergraduate students, graduate students, professional students, and dual enrolled students. The Writing Center can help with all stages of the writing process, including brainstorming, drafting, revising, and polishing. We work with many forms of traditional writing, including essays, reports, labs, personal statements, theses, dissertation, and articles. We also work with multimedia communication, including slide presentations, websites, videos, social media, and more and we work with professional documents such as resumes, cover letters, CVs, and personal statements. At the Writing Center, we aim to help you develop skills and build on your strengths as a writer and communicator. To set up an appointment, go to usm.mywconline.com. Enter your student ID and password in the provided box and search the scheduler. Click on the day and time you would like to make an appointment. Please be sure to verify if you would prefer an in-person appointment or an online appointment. We also take appointments by phone or in person. For appointments by phone or for any questions, please call the front desk at 601-266-4821. We hope to see you soon.